Um, so without further ado, I'm going to introduce our uh, speakers to you this evening. So um, we have uh, from KW Professional Organizers, we have Samantha Christofferson and Emilio Jose Garcia Rodriguez. That's a mouthful, Jose, or Emilio. <laughs> um, and so they're the husband and wife duo behind uh, KW Professional Organizers. And um, since 2012, they've been helping people transform their lives, organizing their belongings. Uh, they have written a book. Uh, called A Recipe for an Extraordinary Life. Uh, they focus on self-care through organization and minimalism. And uh, we actually, uh, I guess we found or came, got in touch with, with Samantha and Emilio um, a couple years ago when they were part of the Farm Smart Conference in Guelph. And uh, some of our members participated in their session and said it was excellent. Um, so when we were planning for uh, this evening's event, we thought that uh, they would be a great duo um, who is living in these weird times, just like we are trying to, uh, trying to, you know, manage work from home and also uh, manage family life and look after themselves personally. So I'm going to make them the hosts so that they can uh, share their video and share their screen uh, because they've got a presentation and uh, we're looking forward to it. So I'll turn it over to you guys. Hi, Emilio and Samantha. Thank you, Jennifer, for that lovely introduction. Thank you so much. And for yes, that. when originally um, you had reached out, we were actually, the day you had your conference was the morning we had our daughter, Eva. So that was, you know, good and bad timing, I guess, because we ended up not being able to be there in person. But uh, yeah, it was nice to get the feedback from your conference and it seemed like people really enjoyed themselves. So Amelia's just queuing up our slide deck. Um, can you for, see the screen well? Yes, we can. Perfect. Okay, great. And if anybody has questions, as Jennifer said, please pop them into the chat. And uh, we are going to go through the, the slides on a rather like fast moving, just so that we keep the interest going. So if there are any questions, please let us know. And exercises can always be printed later and done afterwards if you'd like. Yeah, and you will get a copy of all the slides. So don't worry about taking notes. If you, if you don't have enough time to write everything from the slides, you will have a copy after, okay? So that you can go back and, and reflect. So this is us, we are KW Professional Organizers. So now you can see our faces through the little screen. It's pretty much the same, right? My white spot's still there. Yeah. <laughs> Samantha cut her hair like a, a few weeks ago, a new look. No, sorry, it was a month ago and I shaved okay. it. I shaved it right down, not even gonna mess around with haircuts during mm -hmm. COVID, right? Mm -hmm. I'm proud of it. She wanted to do it for so many years. So just to prepare for today's uh, exercises or presentation, if you will, uh, we do ask that you try and participate in what we are going to do. There's just uh, three or four little exercises that I think could be super handy. And then make sure your distractions are off. So try and respect this time. Put the phone away, turn off the notifications, close the door, put a note up. Um, and if you can, have a scrap piece of paper and pen around or if you have the printouts because then that way we can do some of the exercises or pen to paper. Um, be like me, I've got my cup of tea or if you need to use the washroom, go ahead and, and get in that nice comfy position. And we're just going to start with three big breaths in and then out because that's just going to help us center ourselves in our chair or on the floor or wherever we are, okay? So one big deep breath in. Let it out. One big deep breath in. We're doing it too, because we need to relax. And one more deep breath in. Okay, now we can go. Okay, so uh, we asked Jen what <coughs> was the interest for this talk, uh, for today's uh, presentation, and there were two main topics that you guys were interested in, and we have here this uh, presentation to cover those two things. The first one is establishing new healthy habits and routines that everybody understands and respects. And the second one is the time management aspect of it, like how to divide your time efficiently between work, family, and own personal time. It's a big challenge for all of us, and perfection doesn't exist. So, but we are gonna give you practical and simple tools that hopefully will help you start creating that change that you want to see. Yeah. 
So the three strategies that we always like to use, whether it's decluttering a closet or talking about how to build a self-care plan, is to first become aware. That's the first step. And then from that awareness, be able to take action on the things that we've become aware of and then maintain those actions. And the maintenance can tend to be the most difficult, the most challenging. But for some people, maybe awareness is difficult. So the activities we're doing tonight, they're really going to try and focus in on maybe what some of those frustrations could be coming up with COVID and being at home and still working, still participating as a family member. Yeah. So Samantha was saying that we are going to cover the three main topics. So in the awareness, uh, we, we are going to have uh, having realistic expectations. Uh, uh, we're going to have a gratitude exercise because we believe that gratitude is really important, focusing on the positives. Uh, the current you versus the future you exercise, we have another one. A self-care plan exercise, a very quick uh, list for you to have and then getting it down all on paper. Ideas for that, to get it out of your head. Yeah. And then the action. It, oh, this is funny. Maybe we'll just jump ahead. There yeah. we go. So our action is going to be communication desired your schedule week, learning how to say no, and creating fun ways to spice up your week, and then maintaining it. We're going to talk just about a couple of things, a habit tracker, using calendar reminders, or even using just a personal journal. Yeah, so we have a lot of visual uh, content for you to like kind of see, because uh, we know it's easier to see things. So in the awareness stage, the first thing that we always recommend is having realistic expectations, especially during COVID-19. Things don't happen as usual. Everything is slower. And we tend to be an, an not patient enough. So that's the first thing that we have to do. Oftentimes people will tell us that they're going to do a project. Normally it relates to decluttering or something like that. And they say, oh yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bang this out in three hours. And we always say, whatever you think you're going to estimate, always add extra time. And having unrealistic expectations often leads to feelings of never having enough time in the day. So if you find yourself thinking, I don't have enough time in the day, I wish this day was 26 hours long, those common statements are because you might be setting really high expectations. You can often have frustrations with life satisfaction because your expectations are too high. It can lead to depression. It can lead to conflict with others. But having realistic expectations often leads you to feeling like you have way more control over your time. You're getting the things done that you thought you were going to get done. So you have that feeling of accomplishment. You have positive working relationships. You're not expecting too much of others. And your overall life satisfaction does increase. Yeah. So the first exercise we're going to do is a gratitude exercise. Um, this exercise is based off of Sean Acker. Um, he wrote a book called The Happiness Challenge or The Happiness Pursuit. Sorry if I'm getting his title wrong, but Sean Acker. He designed a morning routine that focused on getting started with gratitude as well as moving the body and that kind of thing. But it actually has a lot of statistics that back up that gratitude can help you uh, open the door to new relationships. All of these things are scientifically proven. Gratitude helps improve your physical health. It improves your psychological health. It enhances your empathy, which is like your ability to understand and be in someone else's shoes. It helps you sleep better, improves your self-esteem, and increases your mental strength. Um, I am a person who practices a daily gratitude, and this is what it looks like. So the first thing we want to do, we're going to give you two minutes. We know it's a short amount of time, but hopefully you can do this. Um, we want you to write down three things that you're grateful for and write down one positive experience from the last 24 hours. And the reason why we want to start with this is because it's going to put you in the frame of mind of what are you grateful for? If you're finding it challenging, you can say things as simply as, I'm grateful for um, electricity. I am grateful for the cookie I ate. Um, or you can get deeper and you can say, I am grateful for the relationship I have with my, my partner or my child, so on and so forth. Yeah. So we'll so, just give you a little bit of time. Yeah, a couple of minutes. Okay. And we can't see you, so we trust that you're doing the exercise. Yeah, and Jen, if there are any questions that make sense to kind of answer now, uh, just please uh, let us know, okay? Yeah. Okay, we don't have any questions on the chat at the moment, so. Yeah. 
oftentimes when we're in a place of darkness as well, it's really hard to pivot out of that. But a way to do that is always bringing it back to what should I, what do I have to be grateful for? Um, so when you're in those heated moments or you wake up in the morning and you don't want to get out of bed, um, you can think about, you know, well, I'm grateful that I have a bed or I'm grateful that so on and so forth. Um, changing that actually changes the chemistry in your body. Um, yeah. So we'll move on from this exercise. We hope that you were able to jot down some things. If you want and you're brave enough, you can share a couple of them in the chat Nicole, just yeah. so that we can share with other people. I will tell you after doing these, uh, we just did one just before COVID happened yeah. and almost every single person's number one thing that they were grateful for was related to family. Family and friends, yeah. And that, that I think speaks volumes because we're in COVID and our bubbles are so small and we really are missing those connections. It, it's amazing how universal it is. Yeah. So another quick exercise. Yeah, this is fun. This is more visual, okay? This is for people who like to, to draw. Some people are more visual. Like, so this is a, to make a cartoon about how you feel right now and how you would like to see yourself. This doesn't have to be anything fancy. Uh, we have a couple of examples for you. Again, this is an exercise. Maybe it's not for everybody. If you're not a visual, visual person, don't you can stress use, out. You can use a word to describe your current mood yeah, right now. You can use a word, but basically these are two examples of uh, ourselves. Like I start with mine on the left. So basically uh, on the top, you can see the current me. I was feeling like a, a lot of weight on my back. And he then, called uh, it an insurmountable weight on his back. Yeah, and then as you can see, there is a lie with a lot of, lot of ideas, uh, like financial pressure, like a, there is a clock. That's the time management thing. I wasn't feeling very balanced. And the to-do list, I, I, I had so many things to do, right? And the ideal me was like me juggling everything really well. So that was what came out in like a few minutes that I did. And my little uh, round belly stick lady, um, I really felt like I was being pulled in all directions. Um, you know, these cartoons when we drew them was a couple of months ago. Um, and then the ideal me, what I always envision, what I tell people and what I share with people is that, you know, like my life is fancy free, full of music, the winds blowing in my hair, there's stars, Eva and Emilio there are in a tent. I, we like being outside and our little cat Negrito's there. So doing this exercise connects you with something. It makes you laugh a little bit at yourself, but it also is this timestamp where it can show you, uh, Physically, Emilio, I don't think he even realized when he looked at his, like how no, much was, it was weighing you down, right? Yeah, there, there, is, there is also a lot of science behind uh, using a uh, pen and paper and doodling. And sometimes uh, you just sit and you start doodling your ideas down on paper. And, and the truth is that so many times you draw something that you don't even know why you did it, but then you see the explanation after, and that came from inside you. So it's giving you answers. So this is a good exercise to try and see what happens. And again, not all these exercises are a good fit for everybody, but these are just ideas that we use and we have seen people like uh, seeing success with. Yeah, we've, we've used this uh, several times with some of our coaching clients. And like Emilio said, they look at their drawing afterwards because we photograph them and keep them. And we'll set, I sent one to a, a, a client uh, just last year saying like, look at this, this was from five years ago. And she had a good laugh about yeah. it. And she's like, I can remember being in that state. Yeah, so. and if you guys feel brave enough, you can also like uh, snap a photo maybe and, and share on Facebook or, or just on the comments. <coughs> Excuse me. But again, this is something that, that you can try, especially for visual people. And one of our last exercises. This okay. is the most popular one. This is the one that everybody compliments us when we do talks. And they normally thank us because we gave them the time and space to do a, a self-care exercise. So we do want to give you two minutes. I know it sounds bad to have just silence, but why do we believe in this self-care list? It's because we often come into scenes where people are drowning, where they're just in survival mode and uh, they are grasping at straws. And oftentimes to get back to that place of feeling more in control, feeling positive, feeling in a place of gratitude, it's coming from looking after yourself. And the only person who knows how to look after yourself best is, is you. So this list dives into getting to the care that's provided for you by you. And it's about identifying the needs 
and taking those steps to meet them using activities that nurture yourself. And you need to take care, proper care of yourself by treating yourself as kindly as you treat others. Because probably a lot of you are givers. You are willing to jump at the at the chomp to help a friend or if someone reaches out, you're there. Always saying yes. Always saying yes, even when maybe you know you should say no. If you've never heard of the term self-care or you'd like to learn a little bit more about it, TED Talks are little 15-minute videos. They have an amazing playlist. You can do this instead of Netflix. It's free. And their playlist is about 10 videos, and all of them are just such good nuggets. Like, yeah. you could just eat that up, and it's, it's really digestible. Yeah. So here's our exercise, okay? We want you to make a list of 10 things that is just something that you can do for yourself. So it's not dependent on other people. Generally, there's no barriers. It shouldn't cost money. It shouldn't, um, should have provisions. So COVID, it, this could be a friendly version of it. There's a couple on this list. Here's the examples. Nature bathing, aka walking outside, that could be on your, your list. Practicing deep breathing, spending time with your pet, cooking a nice meal, reading a favorite book, so on and so forth. So we're really gonna we're really gonna give you this time right now. Uh, we'll start the clock. Please try and jot down up up to ten, as yeah. many as you can. And so many times we find people that they comment, oh, I had a really hard time doing this exercise. That's, that's okay. still that's still a really good uh, awareness to, for you because uh, we planted a seed in your head, and you're gonna be able to think about this, and you're gonna be able to if you cannot right now write things down you are going to think about them and you're going to realize oh there are a few things i can do and you will find them and when you find them and you and you do them your day is going to look a little bit nicer because uh they don't have to take a lot of, a long time they could be quick things that you can do and you can feel way better so we're going to give you a couple of minutes to do this one and again if you want to share uh feel free to share some uh, your top one or two in the comments okay mm -hmm. I wish we were in the same room together. Yeah, sometimes we bring uh, like Tibetan balls or some sort of like a uh, kind music, uh, something to get you in the mood. Uh, It's also helpful uh, to do this list uh, so many times, especially before COVID, when people used to like go to the office to work eight hours a day. Uh, we always recommend to maybe have two of these: one for when you are at work, and the other one when you are at home, because sometimes they will write things to do when they were at work that they can only do at home, and vice versa. So maybe having two uh, can make sense for you. Again, it doesn't have to be something very complicated, because if not, you won't do it. I'm not sick, by the way. I have a hay fever, so I'm very grateful for my allergies because yeah. it makes me, when they're over, be really grateful that I can breathe again. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to move on. Again, this is an exercise that we always recommend that you uh, do it every now and then, tweak it, and then put it in a very visual place so that you can see it every single day and try to do those things. And if you have any other thing that, that you started doing and you realize, oh wow, that thing made me feel really well, add it to your list. So when you're feeling frustrated, you can go there and, and, and do it. And if you can share how many you got, did you get 10 or maybe five, or maybe three or seven, uh, please write in the comments so that we kind of know. It's the only interaction we get with you guys. We don't know if yeah. we're like killing you or if you're loving it, we have no idea. Uh, so the last exercise isn't really an exercise. It's going to be an overview of just showing you the, the options that you have for getting ideas out of your head. Um, so getting it down on paper. And I noticed that there are some things in the chat, but we can't see them. So yeah, Jen is monitoring. Yeah. So we'll click ahead and we'll see yeah. the brain dumping. So this is something that I actively do because I'm not... Amelia will show you another te that, a technique that's too organized for me. I'm a brain dump person. I'm also a journaler. So I will take a page at the beginning of the month and I will regurgitate everything out of my head onto that page. 
It can become to look a little bit messy, so I add colors or I, I circle things. But the idea is that I'm trying to get everything out of my brain onto that paper. It's kind of like a monthly to-do list, if you will. But because I keep it in a journal, I always get to go back to it. I can refer to it, I can move things forward in my journal, or I can acknowledge that I'm not moving, like that was a silly idea, I don't know where that came from kind of thing. And when I'm done, I love physically crossing those things off. So brain dumping doesn't have to be in a journal, it can be on a piece of paper, it can be verbally set into a recorded, um, if you have a recording app on your telephone, or if you have an actual recorder that you can use, um, oftentimes friends are the, the subjects of our brain dumping, uh, but it's a really good exercise if you can to get it onto paper so that you can start to see what your ideas are and maybe when is a certain time that you really feel like you need to unleash them. Yeah. So these are some ideas. There is no right or wrong here. The, the idea here is to try and get everything that is in your head on paper so that then after you will see how we're going to practically put it in your calendar so that you can create the the schedule that you want to see in your life. Another option, this is what I, I did a, for a couple of weeks. Uh, so we are self-employed and I didn't really quite know where my time was going very clearly. So I just audited my time for just a couple of weeks. I had this piece of paper with me and then I was just jogging down everything that I was doing. So after a week or two, I could re reflect back and I could see the task and I could batch them and I could create the schedule that you would see later. Another technique, these are just techniques, so don't don't feel forced to do one if you don't feel like it. So another thing that we use uh, to organize things a little bit better, instead of doing a to-do list that includes everything in there and it can be overwhelming, we try to separate things by category. In our case, and this is what we share in our book, uh, we talk about seven main headings that we try to like address, just the body, mind, family, social work, staff, and giving back. So we do what we call a creation. And we basically go through those categories and we try to write down what we want to see, what we want to do. And that helps us set the intention. It helps us reflect. It helps us be able to, to see if we didn't know. Hold on, hold on. Everybody look in the top left. It says cut your hair because this was this winter. <laughs> so I have been wanting to shave my head That's for like true. five years. And I finally was like, you know what? I'm putting it in my creation because I don't know why I'm not doing it. So seasonally, we do this probably winter spring summer and then again in the fall because that's it's about three to four months before our creations start to become a little like uh not okay. relevant yeah, yeah not relevant yeah. anymore uh and this is what it looks like and we use the headings like emilio said to try and bring some kind of clarity to the brain dumping if you will you can use any headings that make sense for you. You don't have to use these specific ones. This is another example. Oh, I'm sorry, my picture didn't turn out very well. Yeah. This is my current creation. I doodled a little bit on it. Um, I really should take better pictures for you guys. Well, I guess I don't want you reading it in detail anyways, but it's interesting how different my spring and summer creation was from my winter. And I think I attribute that to the beautiful seasons of Canada, but it's amazing how much you yeah. can change and grow in three months. Yeah. And then I have mine in my journal too, the current one. And then we call them creations because the truth is when we write them down and we reflect on them and we have a happy tracker that you will see later, things actually happen because you are putting intention and energy behind those things. So an, another technique that I use with the clients, and I think it's interesting, again, maybe not for everybody, but mind mapping. It's a really good tool to get everything down and you can connect things. It's very interesting. If you are interested, we, I made a, a YouTube video, the uh, five minute one that you can see a real one that I did with a client so that you can see how it works. And I put uh, priorities, I put time and I put even money and cost of things. And by the end of this, like the client had a, a great, uh, schedule to, to do things. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now that we've gone through the awareness section, which for some people can be very enlightening, it can also be very triggering. Um, it is normal uh, when doing some of these exercises that maybe we start leaking from our eyelids, mm -hmm. or maybe we get a little bit defensive, or we get frustrated and don't want to do any of those types of things. Um, so we encourage you to keep an open mind and to try any of those exercises. We know we're going quickly through them, but like Emilio said, not all the exercises will speak to you. So pick the one that speaks to you and try and do that. And maybe at a later date, pick one of the ones that didn't speak to you. 
trying to get yourself into the shoes of trying to do those yeah. exercises. And, and try to think about the frustrations that you're experiencing when you are feeling stressed and try to feel, uh, start to think about when are you feeling that way with who, what are you doing? So the more that you narrow down those frustrations and stressful moments, the more you will be able to do something to, to change that. So what do you do once you've done these exercises? You have to communicate them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, communication, finding the happy balance. If you're with a partner or you're with a family unit, it's something that everybody can do these exercises probably from around the age of 12 and up, anything under than that, we are gonna to have to design something more, um, more for, for kids that they can understand, might be more visual, um, but everybody can do these exercises and participate. And the reason why you wanna communicate is because you need to involve others, especially if you're sharing spaces or you're working together. You need to be respectful of their uh, responses. You, they need to be respectful of yours. You have to be open to compromise. Don't judge too hard. We all judge. Just try not to do it too hard. Uh, one way that we use uh, when we're super angry with yeah, each other, uh, because we are, I, I don't know, I guess. Frustrated. Just frustrated. No, we're headstrong. Right? Let's say we're headstrong, okay? Yeah. We're both very competitive people too. We get a timer out, a digital timer from the kitchen. We set 60 seconds and we press start. And who's ever holding it gets to talk, 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 talk for that 60 seconds. And when it beats, goes over to the other person and they talk, talk, talk. And basically what ends up happening is that we talk ourselves out of whatever argument we were having. We generally laugh or we just realize like, what is it? What is, what is really what we're talking about? Yeah. Um, because when we give that person the silence that they need to vocalize, it forces us to listen. And then you also get to reciprocate. So you get to vocalize and the other person has to listen. It's very, very helpful. Yeah. We also jump up and down. So if we're in a mood where we're not doing well, we will hold hands and then we will physically jump up and down. We feel silly and ridiculous and it really works. It exactly. really changes everything. Your mind's we start laughing, we start getting silly and it really works. Deep breathing is something that we also do when we are very, very upset. We force ourselves to deep breathe three times. And I can tell you that by the end of those three deep breaths, uh, we are different. Sometimes we're is different. pushing the yeah. air in someone's face. And but. using a mediator is always very helpful. Like when you can't agree on something or, or you just need the external help, someone listening to both parties and kind of like agreeing to a contract of some sort that you put down and someone is keeping you accountable can be very, very helpful. Emilio and I 100% profess we use counseling yeah. um, because we thrive with coaches. Yeah. We thrive with people who can look at us and help us work through yeah. roadblocks, frustrations, yeah. barriers. We use business coach uh, and then we use also like a couple coaching and stuff like that and it really works and yeah. it's really helpful. So one of the ways that you can clearly communicate, um, a friend of ours, he's a local psychologist, his name's John Roche, says break it down into four things. Always observe and say what you're observing, express your feelings, connect your feelings to what you need, and then make a request. And so what does that look like? Uh, it basically, he, walk through me with, or walk this, no, sorry, I can't even talk. Yeah, this is an example. An example. When you slam the door, which is an observation, I felt angry, my feeling, because I was really hoping to speak with you, the need that I needed. In the future, can you try and stay calm and say that you need a minute? which is the request. So it's a very honest way of dealing with something that can be very difficult. If one person's angry and leaving, when it's time to be calm or if you need to write it down, making sure that you're connecting and not just speaking from a place of anger. Yeah, yeah. communication is very essential, uh, especially because you have to be aware of each other's needs and with your partner, with your family members, like business partners, you have to do that. So once you have all that awareness in place and you know the tasks, you have the inventory of the things that you have to do, uh, that's when it's time to actually decide, uh, design your, your week, the week that you want to see. Something that is realistic. This is a quote from a person. Uh, when I did the Smart Farm conference, I was in touch with uh, different people from the industry and one person told me this. Schedule the balance that you want. Don't wait for it to magically appear. And it was so true. It's like, if you don't do anything intentionally, it's not going to happen. So you have to put things in place. How to do it? So here's my, I do physical uh, drawings of my schedule of what I ideally like to happen. This is March. So this is pre-shutdown of COVID. 
Um, on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, our little girl is in daycare, which was very handy for us being able to work with clients and also do back end work. And you can see that I have what's called Eva time. That is the time that I am responsible. I'm the daycare provider, I'm the parent. And the times that are in a white or you see all the, all the yoga and all that other stuff, that's when Emilio is taking that Eva time. So we actually have split up her care. Um, we still do things together all the time, but to know when we're able to go to yoga or he can go to squash, we separate that time and we say, right, let's try and make this consistent. If it needs to change because something comes up on a Monday, no problem, we switch it around. But this is the ideal. Yeah. So this is pre-COVID. This is, oh my God, COVID happened and we have no idea what we're doing. Yeah. There's nothing in our calendar other than we still have to meal prep. We have a tiny office in the backyard. So that's where we use to kind of get away and be able to have a uh, quiet uh, work time. And then we were like, well, Eva, we're just going to alternate every three hours. That's what we're going to do. That, that didn't work really well. It was well. terrible. It we was tried horrible. one week and for us it didn't work. Yeah. So, so then we switch. This is our current plan. Um, this is June. And basically we've switched to just doing six hour shifts with Eva. We call them shifts. I don't hope, hope you think that's insensitive, but it truly means that now Emilio knows when he can do his stuff. I know when I can do my stuff. And we know when we can mutually do the things together as a family. Yeah, the, this, was oh, the, this was the result of our common frustrations of not knowing when we were free. And because we also work together and we don't have like a nine to five set schedule for work it was very difficult for us to know when am i supposed to work when can when can i book stuff with clients when can i go and play squash or do stuff for myself so the frustration was so high that we needed to do something and this was a solution that worked for us there is no right or wrong here you just have to create something tweak it test it and then reflect on it and then keep creating something until it works for you these are just very practical and we did tools. this before we had kids too yeah so the next thing in part of action, this is going to be hard. Everybody get their muscle out, their big arm muscle, because you're going to learn how to say no. Uh, five ways that you can say no. If people are going, they know that you're a giver, they're going to take more and more of your time. So you learn to say things like this. Right now is not a good time. Can you follow up with me in? And you say a future date. Okay. Yeah. That buys you time to think, to get strong and be able to say no, but you're not into or it. Send me an email. Yeah, send me an email. <laughs> Oftentimes they won't email they won't you. Send it to you. Yeah. So uh, thank you for thinking of me. May I have some time to think about just calling it out and saying I need some time to think. That's very hard to do as well, but it's still a great tactic. That's not ideal for me, but I know someone who would be great. So passing the buck to somebody else, but it's genuine. I appreciate your time, but this is not something that interests me. Or I've done this before. I know that this is not going to yeah. be good. If you guys have another one different to this, please put them on the comments below because uh, it will help us have more resources uh, and more ways to, to say no when we feel like it's not the right fit for us. I have a friend who has that printed off so that they can actually just put Both that because things. they always are just like, oh, sure, oh, sure, oh, sure. And then at the end of the week, they say, where'd all my free time go? And it's because they're giving all the time to other people. Yeah, another thing that we want you to be aware of is time wasted to avoid, okay? This is a list that you can, when you get the printable, you can print this and then have it with you if you want to remind yourself all the time. Things that are going to waste your time if you are not intentional and aware of them. So if you go through this list and you can put something in action to prevent this from happening or at least reduce them as much as possible, you're going to become way more productive and you're going to be able to have more time to do the things that you want and rather than the things that you must do only. Because when people say, how are you doing? And you say busy, that's not a fun answer. You should have something great that you want to tell them about or, you know, be able to explain into words. Being busy, busy being busy. It's not fun. It's not a great way to be. Yeah. Okay. And then so the other actions you can take are activity lists. So for example, because of the COVID restrictions, we were looking for what are the things that we can do with Eva so that we're not having decision fatigue. So just like meal planning or that kind of thing, we basically created our list of our favorite activities, inside activities, outside activities, so that when we have Eva and we're thinking, oh, I don't really know what to do, we can go to the list and we can be like, oh yeah, I forgot. We have the mm -hmm. uh, a Bechtel Park just around the corner. Let's go there and go for a walk. It doesn't have a, a playground yeah. or anything. Or, hey, there's the Play-Doh in the fridge. Let's grab that out and let's do some cookie cutter stuff. Um, so just having that list 
releases your brain from having that decision fatigue of thinking, oh, I don't know, and she's going, come on, let's play, and yeah. you don't know what to do. And on the right is an uh, exercise that we did, and we have this successfully four times, I think now? Three times. Three times. Yeah. We started a couple of weeks ago, and we tried to do it twice a week, and this is just a month that created this for us to follow. It's an exercise routine because we don't have the gym, we don't have our sports, we're some and, and we're getting a little holiday weight. And another activity, we laugh about this, but it's true. Having these lists makes it easy. We get up in the morning and we say, okay, let's go through the list, and we start doing the lunges and the push-ups. So another way to make things exciting is to take those lists, write them down on a piece of paper, activities more, not the exercise thing, and put it, put it into the jar, and then when you want to pick something to do, shake the jar, pull something out, read it, and then do that activity. If you don't like it, just pull out another one. Yeah. But everything that you put in the jar should be fun. And that kind of gives it a little bit of spontaneity, a little bit of, ooh, what are we going to do? Well, yeah, let the jar tell us. It's, it's like a, a little, surprise. It's like a magic eight ball. Okay, and then the third step is the maintenance. So you became aware of everything. You created the plan of action. But then once you have a plan in place, you have to make sure that you maintain that. So how do you do that? We have a few tools, okay? We personally use what we call a habit tracker. We love it. We have a journal, and then this is how it looks like. So anything that you wanted to do, basically you write it on the left, and then you just write the days of, of the week. Of, I have a full month, for example, in here, and then when I did it, I put it in, in green, and when I didn't do it, I put it in red on the left-hand side. So you can see, like, I have exercise, uh, cook food, uh, drink water, not biting my nails, stuff that you wanted to make it a priority. And how long does this take? Um, I do about five minutes of journaling every morning. I do that gratitude exercise. I've been doing it for over two years now. And I do tell you, it really has lifted me out of depress depression and has helped me grow the habit tracker that takes about 30 seconds because I'm literally going through the list saying did I do this yesterday yes no yes no yes no the colors mean nothing and it's a great way for me to to recognize am I doing what I want to be doing am I reading enough am I doing tutorials am I doing my yoga uh, and the truth is I don't beat myself up about it exactly. but I, I know what I've been doing and you can also do this digitally. There are apps for this uh, that you can use your phone if you prefer. We try to avoid uh, more distractions. We are already too much time in our phones. Yeah. Calendar reminders is another thing that we use all the time. They are very helpful. We both use a digital calendar, and Samantha also has a paper one. But we always use that because it's so helpful. It reminds you of everything that you want to do. And that visual week that you saw before, I have the same thing on my Google Calendar with colors and everything. And I find it so helpful. Because I open my calendar and I can schedule anything with confidence. And it can be physical. It's okay to have a physical calendar to still write things down that way or to have the day yeah. planner. Some people feel shamed of, into that because of the digital world. Yeah. You don't need to be. This is our kitchen. Um, actually, like if we just shifted the camera to the left, you'd see it. Yeah, this is just an old window that we have up on our wall. We use it to meal plan. And then we also use that as like a place to store our grocery list. So we write yeah. things up as they go. And if there's notes or anything like yeah. that, we write it there. And then this is just an image of what Google Google calendars looks like for using reminders. If you're unfamiliar with if you're Android or iPhone, what you have to use, YouTube is a 100% the best place to go and say, what's a great calendar reminder yeah. for iPhone? And someone's going to teach you. Why, why calendar is so important? Because uh, when you have your list, if you don't fit those things in your week, uh, you won't be realistic. So once you fit everything in your week, what's going to happen is that you will have to prioritize if you have too many things to do and it's going to look real and you can look at your week and think, it's too full, I need some extra space or maybe, oh, I have way more time than I, than I expected. And then you can plan with intention. And the last thing we recommend is a daily journal. Uh, it can look like anything. You can do things like writing down your wins and challenges or reflections and feelings. We do that on another window in our bedroom um, as, it, as it relates to work because we feel that it's a great outlet for us to be able to reflect and grow and yeah. also not fall into old habits. You can do the gratitude journal. Um, again, this is a look at my calendar overhead. Um, so I've got my ideal week. I've got the habit tracker there all on the one page. And then I can continue journaling throughout. Yeah. So to recap, yeah. going through and becoming aware, it's a big step. Uh, we need to take another deep breath because I feel Emilio, he's just like chomping at the bit. Because it's, uh, it's 41 minutes. So yeah, so we're stopping. Um, but we just want you to be in that place of calm, become aware, know what your self-care is, 
take some action on that. Schedule some of those self-care items into your, into yeah. your calendar, physical or digital, and then maintain it, respect it. Learn how to say no. Look how cute we are. And, and always cute. communication is one of the most essential things. If you create this plan by yourself and you don't share this with, with your loved ones and with the people that are important in your life and they don't even know about it, they won't be able to help you and they won't respect anything. They won't understand anything. When you share this and if everybody does the exercise separately and then you share, that awareness piece of each other is going to be so powerful that you're going to understand why your partner or why your business partner or your son is doing that and vice versa. And it's going to help you create a better lifestyle. So we're going we're gonna to stop sharing. If you have any questions or you want to dive down a rabbit hole, you can go to our website, kwprofessionalorganizers.com. Yeah. We have our, our blog on there, our book, and also all of the information that we talked yeah. about. So now, Jen, uh, we are opening for uh, questions, if you want, if you have any. Um... Oh, there were people in the chat. There's yeah. so much good stuff there. That was amazing. I, there, there's so many times I wanted to comment on things, and, I, and there, we had a lot of people, um, yeah, we had a lot of people participating in the activities in the chat on Facebook and in the Zoom, um, oh, adding awesome. their feedback and comments. Um, so we have one question here from asks, um, do you plan your ideal week just once and then adapt it if things come up or are you planning, uh, your ideal week on a regular basis or a weekly basis? So I can jump on that, uh, first, uh, I do it every month. Jump yeah. First. So the, there is a, a rule of thumb that we always believe in is like, a when you are feeling frustrated, when you're feeling unbalanced, when you are feeling that things are not flowing the way that you would like to, that's a good sign that you need to tweak something. So having it in paper or having it on, on your phone that you can reflect on, you can look, go back and see that week, see why you are not feeling well, what can you change and, and, and tweak, and then you can test it for a full week and see how it, how it goes. It's not going to be perfect from day one, but when you do that over and over a few times, I can tell you that it gets really easier. We save so much time after so doing this. So how often do you do yours? I do mine normally every month at least. I We we kind of go back to it just to make sure. But Once I draw mine, then he changes his. Like anytime I feel frustrated, that's when I go to someone and say, we have to change something here. It's not working out. Mm -hmm. That's when we do it. Okay, great. Great. I was wondering if you can share your book title again. Yep, it's a long one. Um, it's called A Recipe for an Extraordinary Life, Organization, Minimalism, and Self-Care. It's available at the Waterloo, Kitchener, Stratford, and Brantford Public Libraries. Um, so you can get it there. We have an ebook copy and a hardcover copy for sale on our website. Mm -hmm. Or if you're in town, you can buy it at the Queen Street, Con oh no, sorry, COVID. Paying by Mansi, but, but yeah, you can order it from our website and it's free shipping to Canada. So yeah. it's a. Uh, you can't go into those stores, forget it. Yeah. <laughs> and we also have a, an online course based on our book. And then when people buy the book, we are happy to give a free copy of that video course where we dive deeper into all the exercises and how we do things and why. So it's very, it complements really well. Awesome. Awesome. I can share a link to your website in the chat um, yeah, you, well, you can. if um, folks want. Um, I've got a question over here on Facebook. Um, do you have a set number of habits to track? I limit it to the page. So I have a half a page is what my limit is. I've done as few as four. But now consistently, I probably do about 15 just because there's certain things that I really, you know, I track whether I journal, whether I exercise, whether I read, whether I do a movie or television at night. Um, now I'm doing if I'm getting up early in the morning because I was challenged by that. So um, there is no set. But if you're just starting for the first time, maybe just start with a few less than five and just see how that feels. Yeah, and, and this is mine, I don't know if you can see it, but I have also like less than 10. My suggestion is uh, the more overwhelmed that you feel, the less energy you have for new habits because you need to master the basics first. But once you start feeling in control of your time, of your surroundings, things start flowing better and you 
start freeing up time, that's when you have more energy and motivation to like do more things, right? So it's very personal depending on where you are at in life. If you have kids, for example, you have way less time for hobbies and things. That's an assumption. Yeah, again, every situation is different. So you have to look at yourself, become aware of how much time, how much energy, realistically, how many habits can I integrate in my life and try to do less. Uh, and it's not, it's just, it's not a tool to beat yourself up. It's no. literally to say, okay, um, you know, am I journaling? And if I'm noticing that, oh, guitar is a better example for me. I say that I play the guitar and as I track my habits every month, I pick it up like maybe only four times. Um, I don't want to beat myself up about that, but I do want to, I do want to play more. So it's just this constant reminder of, hey, Sam, pick it up today. Pick yeah, it up today. That kind why, of thing. why didn't I do it? Uh, maybe it's just not relevant for you or maybe you just forgot about it. That's why having the habit tracker really helps you every day to, to reflect about this mm-hmm. and maybe take action the next day into doing it. Or maybe you don't want to do it. You just scratch it and that's it. Okay, great. Awesome. I, I've never really thought to write down. I've never thought to track my habits. There's definitely things where I might set an intention that I'm going to do more of, you know, yoga. Um, and then after a month, you think, oh, I did it but maybe I only did it twice. Never really considered actually making notes of that. So yeah. it's, it's all because of uh, the bullet journal, actually, that we started doing it. So if you um, are at all interested in journaling, we have written a lot of content about bullet journaling. There are several books that you can get from the library or purchase online, um, but it's such a fantastic method that you can bend and weave yeah. to be whatever you need it to be for a journal. But uh, it, it really has... Uh, change the way that we we write. Yeah, and I just want to share one thing about my habit tracker. So you can see here that there is one that is very consistent. So during COVID, what uh, is it? playing piano. So oh, during, yeah. during COVID, I got a, a keyboard for Eva and for myself. I, I wanted to learn how to play the piano. I never have done it. But thinking about practicing one hour a day is too overwhelming. So I just said myself, I want to sit down on my piano 10 minutes every day. That's it. So every time in the morning, normally I have my coffee, I try to sit there for 10 minutes. I time myself with my timer and just scratching that thing first thing in the morning makes me feel successful and well. Mm-hmm. And seeing that I'm and doing that habit. he sounds good. Like he's really improving. 10 minutes a day, every day. It's a lot of time, guys. It's a lot of time. So if you can do that consistently with any habit and you repeat that a few weeks, it will become automatic and then you can move on with something else. That's, that's great. And uh, one more question on the habits. Uh, do you have any advice uh, for dropping bad habits? For example, too much time on social media. I feel like this is what I... I I'm going to answer this good. because Emilio is <laughs> still heavily on the social media because he operates the majority of it for our business. But I just recently deleted Facebook. So I'm very excited about it because... I had a really bad habit of just getting sucked into it. And then I used to use the excuse, well, I can't drop it because our business is there or, you know, I've got all my pictures, but they make it so easy for getting your content off there. There are two things you can, if your device of choice is your telephone, one thing that we did is that we recognized that because we used our phones as our alarm clocks, it gave us permission to have them in bed. No, ruined, ruined our intimacy, ruined our ability to fall asleep. It was the first thing we picked up in the morning the distractions, and distractions. it was bad. So what we did is we went to a secondhand store. We got two old fashioned alarm clocks. We set them up and that's what we started using. And we moved the phones into a, a charging station that was in our living room behind a closed cupboard. So in and around about seven or eight o'clock at night, you put the phones away, we put them in the jack and they're on silent and we don't pick them up until in the morning, we've actually decided that we're going to go and get the phones. Do we miss emergency calls? Have we ever felt like that was a mistake? Never in four years, we have not missed anything. And I just think back of those days when, you know, we didn't have this on-demand access all the time and I think that we can try and justify anything we want and everybody's going to be different but it has definitely added value to our lives by putting it away and then the second thing is trying to actually do a digital detox there's a book I recommend also available at the library called digital minimalism it's an awesome fast feed and if you're thinking about trying to detox or trying to like move away from a bit of that scrolling habit read that book it's amazing. Or look up a YouTube yeah, video that so reviews 
about that book, the biggest tip that I got from that book uh, to replace bad habits, especially with social media, is you need to replace that with something else. Meaning, if you just stop doing social media, but you don't actively do something else to replace the time, you are going to be bored, you're going to be anxious, and you won't know what to do. If you start doing something new and on that time, that's going to help you like forget about the social media, get excited, and maybe occupy your time with something else. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing uh, that you could do to try and stop bad habits. And the, the, the second thing is always setting the intention. When it comes with electronic devices, anytime you turn on your phone, ask yourself, what am I doing right now and why? And set the intention. And if your intention is going on Facebook just to scroll, time yourself. Allow yourself 15 minutes, 10 minutes, half an hour, whatever you want. I do that. I put my timer and I say, I, I give myself permission to stay 30 minutes on Facebook just getting lost. But when the timer goes, I stop. So that's another way of doing it. Like limit how much time you want to spend there. Uh, I have an app on my phone that tells me how much time I've spent and where I've spent it. Uh, And I try and keep my use of my cell phone total under an hour every day, under 60 minutes. Yeah, and something that I did on on my phone, I don't know if you can see, but every time I turn on my phone, there is something that says, what are you doing and why? So every time I, I remind myself or like, oh, what am I doing now? Nothing. Okay, I'm not using it. Oh, no, I'm going to Facebook to respond to a message. Okay, I'm going to do my email. Okay, so setting the intention is really important. Good question. That's, Thank you so I much think, for the question. That, that's brilliant. I know I'm, I'm guilty of going on my phone or going on a social, social media for one reason, and once I've opened it, I've already forgotten what it was. Just, let, 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 let's let's just call this out. It's not actually us. Those devices were designed to hook our attention. Every platform you use is designed like a casino. Their goal is to keep you there as long as possible. You could read content about how dark that role, that like how they put a little red notification dot up on your Facebook. It's because they use the color red because it makes you feel and release this endorphin. Like it's all, so it's all at, dirty. At the end of the day, the only thing that you can control is your intention and your actions. And by you questioning yourself always, why am I doing this? Why am I going to my phone right now? And by you designing that week and allowing specific time for things and using timers so that you don't get lost, those little strategies, honestly, they really help a lot to avoid those bad habits. Yeah, that's great. Um, different uh, type of question I've got. Um, so there's, there's one over here on Facebook and um, there's kind of a similar question actually on Zoom as well around goal setting. Um, so I'm just gonna read you Rain's question. She says, I find the idea of a seasonal creative checklist uh, very overwhelming. The idea of making goals for months ahead. Are there steps to take to develop those seasonal creatives and feel more confident producing those? Is there another question that you said is similar that you're going to read or just? Yes. Um, around, okay, so how do you approach yearly planning? Do you set annual goals? If yes, how? So, um, I guess those they're a little bit different, um, yeah. but I I think I think I I find too when I try and set goals for the year I find even even well I find that very overwhelming because it's a full year right um, so I I can relate on even just months ahead and so I don't know if you want to tackle those separately but um, so uh, yeah I just wanna I wanna be a little bit more clear is that when I'm building my creation, I personally am only reflecting in how I feel in this current place and time. So I'm not thinking about what I'm going to feel like in August. I'm not thinking about what I'm going to accomplish over the summer. I am thinking about what do I currently feel like when it comes to my body? I wanted to cut my hair, so I wrote that down. What do I feel like when it comes to my mind? I want to get more creative with watercolor painting, so on and so forth. So I'm actually only thinking about what I currently feel, how I feel right now. Um, and so it can be overwhelming if you're like, well, what am I going to be like? And am I going to be able, it's just in the present moment. And I would ask when you're starting out to like release that overwhelm, where is the area that you feel the most frustrated or the place that you want to work on the most? 
Is it um, work related? So is it managing separating work from personal life because you work on a farm and you live on the farm? Um, if that is the current frustration or stress or anxiousness, just set a goal for that thing. The reason why we do it seasonally is because naturally, we've been doing this since 2012, naturally we just found that kind of every three or four months, we would crave or feel like we needed more direction. And so seasonally just happened. Emilio will admit his last one that he did was, was in August. And then he just did one a couple of weeks ago. We did one together. And so he, like he didn't feel like doing it. So he took a very long hiatus. There's no hard and fast rule about when you set your goals. And I'll let you answer the long-term one, but yeah. I hope that brings clarification because I am never really thinking about the future me. I am thinking about how do I feel right now? What am I grateful for right now? And what do I, what do I really want to do? It's not shit that people told me I should be doing. It's not stuff that, you know, I've been saying I've been wanting to do it, but I never do it. It's stuff that I really, really deep down feel right now in this moment that I actually want to do. It's not influenced by anybody else. So try and get in that place where you're not thinking about outside stuff. You're just thinking about what's inside. Yeah. And I just want to add, uh, as she's saying, uh, it's very, very important. It depends on what area of your life we are talking about. My answer will be different. But basically what I will say is long-term goals uh, will help you set the direction, right? It's like you get on a car and you want to go to Vancouver, for example, from here you need to know that you are going towards Vancouver, right? Because if not, you will start driving and maybe you are going towards India instead of towards like Mexico. So it's important to have that end destination if that's important to you. So if you, for example, want to have a business in five years from now and you would like to be making specific amount of money or trading with specific amount of clients, that's going to give you a little bit of the direction of what kind of steps can I take right now to get me closer to that destination. And it doesn't mean that you have to have it all figured it out but at least you kind of have a certain idea of where you are going. Some people are less careful about that. They don't really care that much about long-term goals and they just want to enjoy the moment. For those people, maybe having a long-term goal is not important because they are more about the present moment. Let's see what life takes me. And they are not worried about achieving specific things. So for those kind of people, like having long-term goals doesn't make any sense. So this is all personal. It depends on your priorities. It depends on your motivation and your excitement. And what is it that you want to accomplish and why? And if you have any specific goals that are long term, because you will need to take a lot of action, defining where you want to go more or less and then defining, OK, if I want to be here in five years, what can I do every year to get closer to that? What can I do every month and every week? And then you know that if every week I spend one hour in that project, five years later, like it's my, my piano player. Uh, playing. If I sit on my piano 10 minutes every day, I for fact know that one year from now I will be able to play songs. No, I want to bring it closer to home. Like in 2012, we quit our jobs and we started a business and never in our life did we ever know that we were going to get to this place. It'll be nine years in December where we've been in business for nine years. So it's just, okay, we know we want to start a business and then all the nuts and bolts things that those kind of fall into place as they as they are we just do we wanted to have a business if that makes sense yeah. and as long as you keep working towards something you might get there but i think our book does a really good job of explaining our process behind setting goals long term and short term but it's it's autobiographical as well so we really are sharing everything uh, about how we do things we use photos to try and demonstrate what we mean um, yeah and uh, i'm I'm happy to open my calendar a little bit for you guys. If you if you think a call may help you like gain clarity, uh, I have time and I, I do that as a volunteer kind of idea a little bit every month. So if you think that a call with me can help you, I'm very happy to try and see if I can help you like uh, nail down your goal and how you can achieve it. Like uh, so, I'm open to that. Just send me an email and we can schedule a time uh, because it it I really need to know more information. I need to ask a few more questions to be able to give you a more uh, specific answer so we hope that helps yeah. cool. okay so it's it's nine o'clock we have one more question that can i can i ask you guys do you guys oh, have yeah, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. We're, we, we are not in a the rush babe yet. is in bed so yeah we are happy to stay a bit longer if you guys want so no problem um so i feel like we're getting the benefit of this because we get to see you guys on video and you guys can't see anybody else 
Uh, I can okay. see that the chat keeps popping up, so that's lovely. It's okay. so, so the last question on the chat, I think is it's really, really, um, um, I think, relevant in these times, but particularly also for this group of, of women who work in agriculture. And it's, um, what advice can you offer for limiting uh, peak season in quotation marks because you know we're in the spring yeah. season for farming right um, so peak season intrusions into your ideal schedule for example a client calls at 7 30 a.m or 9 o'clock p.m because that's when they're working um, either due to covid or or spring and fall field work so we're trying I'm, to I'm manage our schedules but everyone else has theirs too right and i'm i'm gonna I'm going to give you an example of the people that I think are the smartest people in the whole world. They live in New Zealand. Amelia and I met in New Zealand and we had a mutual friend. Oh, it used to be an ex roommate of, of Amelia's actually. Um, but her parents' business was a beautiful nursery and they were so successful and they were so people lined up to go into this nursery and they had these beautiful native plants and stuff. And you know, when they were open, one weekend every month once a month that's it that's all because they don't want to deal with people on a regular basis they they live in a rural area they had a hard time with employment and they always just said one weekend a month people can come now granted it's it's specific to to a genre uh, um, or an industry but it's so relevant because they are giving the boundary they're saying this is when we're available they have a website you can read you can answer your own questions that kind of thing but they were setting this boundary and the truth is you need to be firm in your boundaries and if the person's calling you at 7 30 a.m you're giving them permission to call them because you're picking up and if that doesn't fit with your schedule they can also compromise so by understanding what your boundaries are like you understanding what your boundaries are and you setting what you feel comfortable and yeah, it's peak, but it's peak for everybody, right? Everybody's in the same boat and nobody's more important than the other. And you probably won't lose business by setting clear boundaries and it will be hard to change boundaries if you've lived a certain way or operated a certain way. But when you understand what those are, there's voicemail, you can call back promptly when you're ready. If, if 10 o'clock is your operating time, you call back, you leave another voicemail. Or you make it as easy as possible to fill a request um, to deal with you in a way that works for you. Yeah. So that's uh, uh, an example of uh, I was helping a small business owner. She, she was running like two different businesses, plus a lot of hobbies, and her problem was pretty similar. Like uh, she wanted to batch her time so that the ideal week uh, she could like follow the templates she created for herself. So it's about educating people that are contacting you. As Samantha was saying, maybe improving the systems that you have so that everything is automated, avoiding as many phone calls because so many times phone calls are not necessary. Maybe someone can send you a quick email and if you have batch, okay, in peak season, I'm taking emails maybe three times a day and then uh, I'm taking emails from 1 p.m. until 2 p.m. and that's, that's the time that you have for emails. Maybe telling people, please send me an email and I will answer three times a day. And that's it. And then people understand that. And if it's not an emergency, they don't even need to call you because calling is very interruptive. It interrupts what you are doing and distracts you. Uh, you can use WhatsApp, you can use text messages, you can use any other form of, of communication so that you can bash your time and do it all at once. So that's my suggestion. Of course, if it's an emergency, uh, emergencies happen and you have to answer the phone but don't but let someone avoid. else's don't let someone else's emergency because sometimes emergencies start oh i'm i'm calling because i need this asap well you probably knew three days ago that you were gonna need it but then you put it off you put it off you put it off and now you're putting your emergency onto me which causes me stress so it's all about understanding that and respecting that but not bending your will all the time to put out everybody else's fire. So as Amelia yeah. said, so really make that clear. I would encourage you to create what you want to see, to try to think how people can communicate with you most efficiently. And then after that, there is a transition period where you're going to educate those people that are calling you. Just tell them, you know what, I, we're changing our system right now. You can use email instead of calling and you have to be a little bit patient with that transition. But 
over time, people will get used to your system and they will just follow it. And you just don't pick up the phone after and they will leave a voicemail and you will control your time yeah. and not the other way around. And uh, I, when I switch to being less on my phone, which I, I really have done, and especially when I'm with uh, our daughter, I try not to have my phone on, meaning with sound and that kind of thing. So when I'm picking up my phone, it's because I choose to. Um, it makes a big difference to turn it off. It sounds really hard. People are always like very defensive, but you just turn it off and that's it. Again, if you check your phone and your email every two or three hours every day, it has to be a very big emergency for you to, to, to miss out, right? So just put things in perspective and, and educate people. And some people are not as organized and they don't even thought about the process but you are being intentional now, you are designing your week, you are taking control, and these little strategies will help you nail down the week that you want to see and let people know how to fit in that week so that you can accept it and be helpful. Excellent, excellent. Well, I think that's, you guys have answered all the questions and I think that was, uh, I, have so many notes scribbled on like the four pieces of paper I printed off. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to making a count, definitely making a weekly schedule for myself, um, trying to operate the restaurant and make time for, for myself and do all the stuff behind the scenes is, is for me, this has been a, a really, uh, really beneficial um, hour. And, and I hope that for our, uh, attendees they found it uh, equally beneficial there's so much good stuff in here so um, thank you thank so much you. for your time yeah and you're you're welcome thank you for for joining us and uh i as as i said at the start we're gonna send out the slides as well to everybody and i'll make sure in that email that we include um, the links to your website um so that people can get in touch with with you if they want to know more um, or if they want to purchase your book I, it's on there as well so um, thank you so much Emilio and Samantha we really appreciate it yeah our thank pleasure you for having us yeah. it was a pleasure yeah, yeah you're and welcome. take Emilio up on his offer so. yeah guys I'm, I'm very happy uh, I really love doing that and I really love uh, helping others so if you have specific goals or stuff like that I'm where you want to mind map he does I'm, mind mapping I'm, I'm very good at um uh, questioning you and, and making you think and, and finding out what is it that you want to do. So happy to try. Awesome.